Well, there's nothing like taking a hot shower before bed or maybe when you get up in the morning. But what if we told you the way you shower could actually be harming your body? We're joined now by Dr. Divya Shokin. She is the founder of Ocean Skin and Bain Institute in Manhattan Beach. Welcome. Thank you. This is something we take for granted, right? We think there's like whatever feels good. Exactly. But there are right and wrong ways to shower. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> or maybe bet maybe it's a spectrum. Better. better yeah, ways. I think there's okay. better ways. So let's start with the temperature. Sure. Like I love a hot shower, scalding hot, but that's not good, is it? Well, <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of evidence that has shown that doing a scalding hot shower is terrible for your skin, right? Uh -huh. Because of course you're disrupting the mantle of your skin and the more that you do that, you're messing with the good and bad bacteria that are on your skin. So cold shower actually helps to decrease your core body temperature a little bit, which also has shown to improve your skin, your hair, your mental stress, just overall quality of life. So like the whole shower is supposed to be cold or just like a little blast at the end? Technically the whole shower, the whole shower. but it's very hard to convince someone to do an entirely cold shower. So I would say at least if you can do the blast at the end. So what's the ideal temperature? The ideal temperature actually is between 60 to 67 degrees. Believe it or not, there was a study at Harvard that was done for sleep and core, what's important temperature wise for sleeping and for improvement of mental health. And that was shown that around 60 to 68 degrees, it's not too uncomfortable but at the same time helps to improve your mental status. It sounds pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> but <laughs> it, I'm, sure it's can like, be. I'm sure once you get used to it, it's fine. Yeah. Um, what about the timing? How long should a shower last? Should you make it shorter? So What's... ideally a shower should be no more than five minutes, right? And I know <laughs> it's like this cathartic experience. Once you get in there, you want to stay in the shower yeah. for as long as you can. But truly, you shouldn't be showering for more than three to five minutes at a time. The okay, I really have been doing clean. this all wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It's something that kind of gets passed down from generation to generation. You know, you watch your mom and your grandma take this long shower and then you're like, well, this is so much fun. Of course I want to do it. Well, also there's like so many, for a woman especially, there's so many steps. You That's know, true. there's like the shampoo and the face wash and the conditioning, the body wash and shaving and all that stuff. Is there an order that you're supposed to do that? Okay, that's an excellent question. So technically, in order to minimize, you know, irritation to your skin, you should probably condition first. Oh. Conditioner um, applied first helps to improve the hair follicles on the on the tips of your hair or instead of just the roots. And then you want to shampoo, then you want to wash your face. If you condition first, then you also improve and reduce the amount of residue that's left on your skin so breakouts are minimized. Wow, I never, never knew that. Oh, I'm learning well, so much. Okay, and then there are the things that people do like brushing their teeth right. and shaving in the shower and all of that. What do you what do you say about all those extra things? You know, I don't hate it. Brushing your teeth into the shower is totally fine. Don't leave your toothbrush in there, but if you want to brush your teeth while you take a shower, I mean, I guess you're reducing waste throughout the world, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And you've removed the residue of the toothpaste sufficiently from your skin so mm. you know you don't have any future breakouts okay I would say go for it well I have learned so, so much here well, there um, is there anything else we should know am I, as, am I missing anything about uh, the way we shower well the biggest uh, qualm that I have my patients get upset at me for is the washcloth versus the loofah mm. and the use of the hand all dermatologists completely tell you no washcloths, no loofah, no actual hard exfoliants. You wanna be just using your hands to take a shower. Using aggressive things that are abrasive on your skin can actually, again, disrupt the mantle of your barrier. So it's never, not worth it. like, do you, is it something you can do like once a month or something? Like just kind of as a, re no, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> okay. No, it's not ideal to use that. Instead, use like chemical exfoliants. And honestly, your hands are enough. What about the um, like face washes and body washes that have the exfoliants in them? No? Depends on which kind. If okay. it's a chemical exfoliant like an AHA or BHA, absolutely fine. But those abrasive beads like apricot scrub. Yes, that's uh, what I was thinking of exactly. No, no, no. No more apricot scrub. That should be left in the 90s where it belongs. <laughs> okay, well, let's end it there. <laughs> Thank you so much for my joining pleasure. us. Really useful tips. I might or might not try the 68 degrees. Try it. Maybe try I'll it. try it one day. <laughs> and you can find out more about Dr. Shokin and her showering tips by going to kcalnews.com and clicking scene on TV. Jamie, back to you.